So, uh, so good morning, colleagues and students. So welcome to this uh, seminar. So a virtual flip classroom design webinar. So I'm I'm Leon and also my colleague uh, Sharon and Crystal and also some uh, technical colleagues and also interns also here. So uh, we will introduce them later on. So welcome to the first webinar. Uh, just to let you know, we will record this uh, recording uh, with this webinar. So we will send you the link later on. So you can access through the Ponoto server later. And today's slides, you can actually find uh, through this link. So hongkongu.2 slash reflip1. Uh, because we will run several webinars uh, in the coming weeks. So just to let you know, um, I'm also the IEEE Hong Kong Session Education Chapter Chair. So that's why this is also uh, some of the work uh, also uh, supported by IEEE. Okay, so uh, actually uh, today's work is a uh, creative common work. So that's why you can, if you are from other faculties or institutions, feel free to use those materials at all for your own purpose. And this work is also a derivative work or from Coursera. So again, so, it's, uh, so if you know, want to know more about uh, Creative Commons, OER, OER and Abbott and Able uh, pedagogies, feel free to contact me. And this is also a collaborative work with ITS, with LES and also our friends Tyrone and Cyrus and other colleagues for technical support. So, uh, so as you know, we may need, still need to do online teaching and learning in the coming semester. So that's why we would like to run a series of uh, webinar. So today's webinar, we can't cover everything. So we will cover only the first part of online teaching, so which is the recording uh, of uh, nat natural videos. So this is quite important because it is quite demanding if you run uh, all those uh, online sessions through synchronous web seminar. So uh, it's demanding for teachers and for students also. So that's why it's good to produce some videos in advance and send to students, let them watch them, uh, let students watch them, and then later on uh, have a more engaging and synchronous discussion through Zoom. So uh, we would like to talk about, just cover the first part, but don't worry, we will also cover the rest, the group-based learning, the nurturing part, and also the assessment later on. So feel free to attend uh, future webinars in the coming weeks. So face-to-face uh, -face teaching and online learning is very similar. So we need preparation in advance. We need to introduce nurturing and activities during the lessons and then have ass assessments later on. So today we will just cover the video production part. So um, we, will, we will quickly go through what kinds of videos we can uh, we, uh, what, what kind of videos can be used in Hong Kong UTNL. Uh, we will focus on uh, talking about some easy to follow technical tips for uh, DIY video production. So if you aim to produce all those videos uh, at your home or, uh, and, or at your office, so uh, there are some things that you need to be aware. So we will cover the before filming, during filming, and after the filming. And we also cover the background audio lighting camera, software distribution, et cetera. So uh, th those are uh, something that uh, easy to follow, but it's also quite helpful and quite variable if you want to produce some uh, up to quality, up to standard uh, videos. Uh, uh, we, we, will talk, we will still talk about, we will still talk about, um, uh, uh, so we, we will not cover the uh, demonstration of Panopto PowerPoint and Zoom today. So we have produced uh, plenty of videos before already. So you can go through those materials through the link and then uh, chat them and then ask us if you have any questions. So, and we will talk about how to use Zoom next week. So uh, through the nurturing webinar. So feel free to join that one. And uh, we, I, I will talk more about the Camtasia part later on, but uh, there will be uh, training materials uh, for uh, and webinars uh, on August. So i uh, let you know. Uh, if you if you aim to produce all the materials, not in your, whole office, uh, in your home or in your office, but if you want to come back to Hong Kong U to do the filming, it's okay because we have uh, plenty of resource to uh, support studios for you. So you can just bring your materials, come to our studio, uh, do the filming, and then can, uh, can get the uh, videos directly. So uh, again, uh, one more promotion. So we will have a, a, a series of webinars 
every Friday starting from uh, this week. So 11 a.m. to uh, 12, 11.30 uh, a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So uh, we will give you more information later on. So uh, if, you are, if you haven't experienced remote teaching last semester, so if you are completely new to remote teaching, so there are already existing resource for you. So you can go to click that Hong Kong U.E. Learn Scott Guide. So with uh, 47 pages, uh, it's a portal of showing all the materials and links that, uh, of uh, links of materials. So you can go to that uh, guide to explore different dimensions. So uh, video production, assessment, uh, Zoom, uh, lecturing, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, of course, we also have training videos already, so covering various kinds of e-learning tools. So if you are completely new to a remote teaching, so I suggest you can go through these materials first. So uh, two news updates. So actually, uh, uh, Professor Yin Ho Day will send you an email this afternoon to talking about uh, we need to provide uh, course materials for students who can't come back to Hong Kong. So that means for lead lecture videos, where we have to produce videos to, uh, we have to uh, produce lecture videos. And for small group, uh, small group learning activities, you have to use teleconferencing tools. So Zoom is a, one of the tools, but you can also try some other else. Uh, and also ITS will send you a email this afternoon. So on the Temptation license. So since all teachers have to produce, most likely you have to produce lecture videos. So RTS has purchased an institution-wide uh, Camtasia license for all of you. So you can use Camtasia to produce the instructional videos, and we will provide trainings at, uh, on August. And it's very easy to use. Uh, you can uh, do the recording, video editing, uh, some basic animation uh, design, all on this Camtasia uh, software. OK, so, uh, so start, uh, to start to talk about the instructional videos. So it's, of course, the major channel for teachers to communicate with students in remote teaching. So uh, this is no doubt. And uh, just let you know, so actually uh, in the, in the uh, second semester, we actually all, as teachers, have uploaded more than 16,500 hours of videos uploaded to Hong Kong Youth Auto Server. So it's also, uh, we haven't included the uh, Moodle uh, server one, and we haven't included the Zoom server one. So it's just uh, within Hong Kong Uperto server, it's quite a lot of uh, hours of uh, resources already. So we believe uh, some of you have tried to use the video production uh, tools, try those things before, but it's quite uh, interesting. So for on campus, so we, we most likely most teachers will aim to produce some up to standard uh, videos for on-campus DNL. So here show some of the examples. So uh, if you tried Zoom before, most likely you have to try the Zoom cast, the talking head, uh, etc. So of course, if you are from uh, STEM subjects, so most likely we also try the, using the tablet. So to draw things on, on the PowerPoint. So uh, to illustrate some steps or some uh, procedures, etc. And uh, if you if you if you use uh, PowerPoint before, mostly you also try the narration function. So you can produce a MP4 file, a video file, on PowerPoint directly. So no matter is uh, with your talking head or without your talking head. So if you use the PC version, uh, you can also include the picture in picture. That means a talking head embedded on uh, the uh, on the PowerPoint screen. So uh, we actually produced all those training materials before, so you can go to chat for those materials. So talking about the production time, so here, show, here is one of the uh, suggestions for you. So if you need to produce one minute of videos, mostly you have to, you need 10 minutes for the preparation or 15 minutes, depends on whether you want to uh, show your talking head or not. So this is, uh, we assume uh, through this uh, factor or this production time, uh, uh, you should be able to produce videos that is very fluent without those heads up or some uh, glitches. So, uh, it, but of course, it, uh, in other way, and in other words, that means it takes time for teachers. Teachers need some need time to produce those materials. So, of course, you can produce video faster if you have some preparation advance. For example, if you have a storyboard or script. You have 
you have you have practiced before, if you are proficient to use those tools, and if you feel comfortable that, that actually the videos have some glitches, that means you may some sometimes have a, a stop, rainbows, etc. Or if you find have uh, received support from uh, your course TA, uh, ITS uh, or department level IT support colleagues or uh, support from us. So if you have these, uh, if you can produce uh, video faster, you have the support uh, or some uh, training before. So my message is that please plan ahead and try to produce videos as soon as possible and earlier in the summer semester. If you start to produce video, uh, maybe at the, uh, at the end of August, it will, uh, it will, it will be quite difficult, yes, because uh, most likely you will, uh, you will have lots of problems and you may have, don't have enough time uh, to produce everything. So of course, some of you may uh, consider, so I'm, since, I'm want to, uh, since I need to produce videos, why don't we produce some Oscar level videos for teaching and learning? So well, of, of course, our team also produce some Oscar level uh, videos for TNL, in particular for Hong Kong Young Book. So we have green screen animations on location uh, filming, demos of uh, those things and have conversations, etc. But of course, it also talking is that means it's also take, uh, it all requires much more time for production. For every minute of videos, for MOOC videos, we need 275 minutes production time. And uh, those times, are uh, used for script writing, filming, and post-production. So of course, uh, given that uh, production time, we, uh, we can produce some Oscar level video. For example, two of our moves actually received the best 10 XX moves in 2019 and 2019. Oh, but of, uh, in, other, uh, in other words, so if you are just for on-campus TNL, so aim at producing up to standard instructional video, but not an Oscar one. So you, you can't, uh, do everything by yourself and then produce some uh, videos like the, the, the videos that I mentioned before. So there, actually there are some teachers that uh, try to produce videos by himself or herself. So one of the, uh, one of the teachers is uh, Professor Michael Patello from Dentistry. Uh, he produced all those uh, demo videos by himself, FAQ videos by himself using a, a camera and uh, speed in, uh, in front of the camera and then do the demonstration. And then of course, he also used the tools for, he also used the tools for, uh, to check whether the videos are well received by, uh, by students. So using a system called Vox. So if you are interested to know more about the Vox, uh, you can also contact uh, Professor Michael Pedello. So actually this uh, system is quite helpful because he also provides some that students' interaction in an online environment is quite interesting. And the next page is uh, also the Dr. K.S. Noi from engineering. So she aimed to produce two uh, spots, a uh, completely online course uh, by herself. Uh, so two, two course uh, within a one semester. So it's quite uh, interesting. So. If you want to know, uh, and actually she also produced videos uh, on talking about how she, whether, when should we use the record video lectures and also the tactics and recommendations. So if you are interested to know more about her stories, so feel free to click the video and to have a look. And of course, uh, this video is produced by CTL and CTL as well as Faculty of Education also provides lots of uh, examples and showcase from teachers how to use videos for teaching and learning. So please go to these two links and to have a look. So uh, lots of examples. So, um, so since we want to do uh, we, um, online teaching, remote teaching, that means we need to uh, use some contents for online teaching. So digital contents, for example. So for example, some of the teachers ask us whether we can uh, play a video, a movie uh, during the class, and um, et cetera, et cetera. And actually be reminded that actually in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong U, so all teachers are protected. Uh, so you can use all kinds of materials you need uh, for teaching and learning within the institution. So if it's for educational purpose, if it's stored for a temporary period, if it's just relevant uh, pages instead of a whole uh, book, uh, it's okay. But the issue, but the problem is that it should be 
uh, those materials should be just for TNL and just for Hong Kong U students. So that's why uh, in uh, Hong Kong U practice, we need to put all those materials uh, in Moodle or Panopple, and which can be accessed uh, through just by, uh, and which is protected by a password. So if you put it in somewhere else, uh, it will be it can be accidentally shared to the public. So that, that will be some issue. And all the materials should be removed within uh, 12 weeks, uh, 12 months. So, uh, so, so be aware of that. So don't try, uh, after producing all those materials, don't send to uh, the public or some uh, auditing students or some uh, teachers in other institutions. There may be some uh, problem. And if you want to know more about uh, the copyright issues in uh, teaching and learning or remote teaching and learning, so please check these two videos or go to click this link. Actually, uh, Dr. LSD, Associating uh, uh, Faculty of Law, actually produced a series of videos on copyright education. So please, uh, if you have worries or questions, want to know about copyright in TNL, go to this link. So the rest, uh, I would like to pass my mic to Sharon to talk about the video production. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Sharon. And in the following session, I'm gonna talk about DIY video production. So some of you may not have experience in remote teaching or you don't have experience in producing instructional videos. So to produce a very basic video, you need to take care of the following dimensions, including background, audio, lighting, uh, camera, software, and how you can share your videos with your students. So on the right hand uh, column, uh, that's our suggestions. So for the background, for the, to produce a very basic video, you just need to film in front of a solid war color background. So uh, we recommend you to use an external microphone uh, to film in place with lots of natural light and to use um, an external webcam for it to film. And as well as using uh, the Hong Kong U campus license uh, the software Camtasia to uh, record your slides and editing as well. And as mentioned by Leon, it's better for you to share your instructional videos uh, with your, uh, to share your instructional videos with your students and upload the videos to HAU Pemnopto. So here is only an overview of uh, the, our suggestions uh, to produce a very basic video. And we're going to explain each dimension in details uh, in the following slides. So in video production, there are three key stages. The first stage is the preparation stage, that is before you're shooting. And the second stage is your filming stage, of course. And the final stage is uh, the editing stage, that is after you're filming. And we'll also uh, cover some additional resources for you to produce your instructional videos. So the first thing you need to understand in video production is that there are various video styles. Uh, as mentioned by Leon in previous slides, there are different styles that you can choose. So choose one that you prefer and then you're more familiar with. So here in the picture on the left-hand side is the uh, most basic one. Uh, we recommend you if you don't have experience uh, in producing instructional videos. So with Camtasia or PowerPoint, you can create uh, similar effects. Uh, you record your slides and you capture your talking head as well. This is what we recommend if you don't have experience in producing video. Um, but you, if you are more familiar with uh, OBS, uh, Open Broadcaster Software, and you have a green screen and you, are, um, uh, you have green screen at hand or you have it at home, you can create this kind of style video. So you can be more creative in the background and in the video style as, as a whole. But this would be more advanced. So if you, ha you think you have the skills and you want to try, you can go for this style. But for people who have less, ex uh, less experience, we we'll recommend you to do similar. Uh, this with Camtasia or PowerPoint. So in the before stage, uh, the first thing you need to prepare is to set your background. Don't start filming right away. Take the moment to set your background. Choose a space that is quiet, a space with lots of natural light if you don't plan to use a lot of lighting equipment. And avoid having bright windows directly behind you because the backlighting will create uh, a weird silhouette that obscures your features. So take a moment to set your background. Um, here are three options of background, uh, three background options. 
The first one is to choose uh, a war that is with solid war color. And the second one is uh, using a cloth uh, hanging up uh, behind you. And the third option is green screen, it's here. So there are a few DIY station at Hong Kong U uh, ready for you to, to use, ready for you to book. So we're going to in, uh, include where you can find all these DIY stations in the last few slides of this presentation. So here is an overview of uh, all of the background options I uh, showed you in the last slide. First option is to create a background in your home, just like simple background, solid wall color. This is what we recommend because it's the simplest, uh, you don't need to buy anything. Uh, second option is to use a background cloth or paper. You can simply hang that paper or the cloth behind you and film. And the third option is to use a green screen. So we have a uh, find uh, where you can buy the equipment, what are their price points uh, in this table. Uh, we're referencing it from price.com.hk. You can have a look, click on the link. And if you really want to buy equipment, uh, you can seek further support from the IT officer in your own department. So all of these uh, price points, all of these equipments are only for your reference and have a look at the price points. So the second thing you need to prepare before you're filming is the microphone. Uh, please, please, please remember that sound is essential in video. Uh, we recommend you to use a separate microphone instead of the built-in one uh, on your camera or on your computer. So because the, the audio will be much crisper and then there will be less ambient noise. And if you prefer to use a, a camera, so we would recommend you to record both the audio on the main camera device and have a separate audio file uh, to sync it up later on in editing. So please remember that it's better to have uh, better sound quality. Otherwise, it would be quite distract, uh, distracting to the learners. So similar to the background option, we have prepared three uh, microphone options. So the image on the left is using a second phone, which is the most basic one. And in the image in the middle is using a clip-on lavalier, uh, lavalier mic. Um, the image on the right-hand side is to use a mic on the boom stand. So this one is the more, more professional one. So this will be the most expensive one. See, so we recommend you to use uh, the middle one. So here are some things to consider um, for the three options. If you want to use your phone, it's better to use, uh, attach it to a tripod. And if you want to use a lavalier mic, it's better for you to adjust the microphone so that it's pointing up towards your mouth so it can capture the audio sound better. And there will be a cord. Uh, so you can hide it inside your shirt so the viewers will not see it. And always test the sound to make sure that nothing is causing an audio issue. So this one, you may find it in some of the DIY stations, uh, but if you would like to buy equipment, so you can have a look at how you can set up a boom mic and what's the price point of getting uh, a mic an external microphone with a boom, boom stand. So similar to the background options, here is an overview of um, the price points and, and where you can find uh, the, and buy a microphone. So the first option is to use a phone. And the second option is to use a lavalier mic. Uh, this one is uh, what we will recommend because it's an external microphone. The audio quality would be it's better and you can simply uh, attach it to uh, plug it in in your computer and record your sound. And the third one is the external microphones. Um, again, we have take uh, references from uh, price.com.k and you can have a look in how much they cost and uh, seek uh, further support from the IT officer if you really want to uh, buy uh, which equipment that you would like to buy. And the third thing you need to take care of is the lighting. An easy way to make your video look really professional is to have good lighting. So just remember, don't frame yourself with your back to a window because there will be a backlight and always diffuse your light to avoid creating shiny areas or spots on your face. So you can do this by pulling the light source back uh, farther away from you. And if you wear glasses, uh, adjust the lights and move it further back to avoid uh, uh, creating a glare on your glasses. So it may take some time uh, to adjust the light if you wear glasses. 
so here is an overview of the lighting options. Um, sim simplest way, the cheapest way is to go for option one, that is to use the natural light. Uh, it's always better than artificial lights, and if possible, you can shoot in an area that is quiet, with lots of windows, and you face the light while you film. And the second option is it involves using an external monitor. So if you need an extra boost of light, you can place the laptop in front of an external monitor. You change the monitor desktop background to the white color, and then you turn up the brightness. I've, uh, we have included this picture for you as reference, so you can see that the uh, background uh, image is in white color. So you can check out uh, these videos here for more details. So the third option is to use a ring light. Some of you may have seen, use, or seen or used a ring light before. It's extremely popular with YouTube creators and it's very easy to use. So um, you can have a look at all of these options. We recommend you to go for option one because it's the cheapest, the simplest one. But if you want to purchase a, a ring light, you can also check out the price points and where you can buy them. The fourth thing that you need to prepare, of course, is your camera. So you don't need an expensive camera to create an up to standard instructional video. So um, if, uh, we recommend you to get an external webcam, but if you want to use your, uh, uh, your, your camera, you always use the tripod to keep your camera uh, stable. So here is an overview of the camera options. The first one is to use your mobile phone or tablet. The second option is to use an external webcam. And this second option is what we recommend because the quality will be a little bit better. And, and the third option is to use um, uh, a DSLR camera. So again, we have included different price points uh, where you can get them. Um, so you can have a look and uh, adjust your budget. So this is uh, about camera accessories. You are highly recommended to use uh, a tripod if you're filming with your camera and you always place the, uh, if you're using a webcam, you always place the webcam at your eye level as if like I'm talking to you. So if you uh, don't have any, any, of, any of the equipments above, you use a laptop stand or put books under your laptop so that you can uh, make the webcam is at your eye level. So we have included some uh, price points and where you can find tripod uh, in below. About the footage space, this is uh, a common thing that uh, some of the teachers um, often uh, miss is that you record uh, hours of recordings. And if you're recording on your, e either it's recording on your phone or your ca uh, on your computer, you actually quickly run out of space on your device. So you recommend it to use a cloud storage system to save the footage or you back the footage up on a hard drive. So bear in mind that sometimes if you have a lot of classes, you need to record uh, hours of recording, you will need to get uh, a, hard disk, um, a hard drive to, to save all the footage that you film. So uh, we have covered different dimensions like background, audio, lighting, camera, and tri tripod to create instructional videos. So we have prepared um, an overview of video production setup cost. So there are three price points. Uh, the first one is, the, uh, is what we recommend because it's cheapest and it's easier, easiest one to create a basic up to standard instructional video. Um, it's under 900 uh, Hong Kong dollar. Um, it includes uh, what kind of equipment you need, uh, for example, like a USB uh, external microphone. Uh, and a camera is the basic uh, uh, webcam, external webcam. And so we, uh, it's better for you to have a look at this uh, uh, other equipments and this uh, budget points. Uh, we have prepared two more. Uh, which is one is under 2,000 Hong Kong dollar and one is over 5,000 Hong Kong dollar. You can also have a look at the equipments and if you have the budget, you can perhaps purchase, but um, we recommend you for, to go with the first one uh, if you don't have experience in creating instructional videos before. Uh, on the column on the uh, right hand side, is this is more professional setting. So you probably don't need this, but we have included this just for your reference. So you can also have a look 
at the equipment that you, what what kind of equipment that produce a really high quality uh, uh, videos. So the fifth one is the select recording and editing software. You can use any other uh, you can use any software uh, of your choice, but the good news is that Hong Kong U has subscribed uh, a campus license of Camtasia. So there will be more training resources in August. And Camtasia is software that you can do video recording, uh, screen recording, and editing in, in one software. So you can uh, check out this software and wait for more resources later on. Uh, but you can also go with uh, other options, for example, like iMovie, or if you're more familiar with video editing, you can uh, go with Adobe Premiere Pro or uh, Final Cut Pro. And some of you may, uh, should be more familiar with uh, Zoom. So we can also do uh, recording and screen recording with Zoom. Um, some Zoom tips. Uh, the internet connection will greatly affect your video resolution and audio quality. So actually, we're not really recommending you to use Zoom for recording if you don't have a stable connection during your recording. So the reason why we uh, recommend you to use Camtasia is because we're talking about creating instructional videos as a pre-class activities. But if you have a synchronized Zoom session uh, and you want to record that synchronized session and you want to share it with students after the class just for them to rewatch, you can still record the Zoom sessions. But it, was, it would be better if you can prepare a, a slightly better and up to standard instructional videos with Camtasia uh, as a pre-class activity. So there are Zoom virtual backgrounds, better to use a simple background image. You can also touch up your appearance feature and have an extra uh, footage uh, asking a co-host to record the Zoom recording. So you can check out um, all of these uh, links later on. For the video specs, uh, it's better to use a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. And this is where you can set the uh, PowerPoint slide uh, setup. And it's better for you to record your screen in highest resolution. So it must be 720p or higher and you, we also recommend you to record in the format of MP4. And some of the students actually watch instructional videos, actually quite a lot of students watch uh, instructional videos on their mobile. So it's better for you to keep this in mind and design the instructional videos for students who are using mobile phone as well. So uh, what this means is that uh, fewer words per slide you can, uh, the few words per slide, the students can see it clearly on the mobile. So to do this, you can make the te text size bigger. So we recommend you to make the text uh, no smaller than 20 point font. So here comes the uh, filming part. So prepare for filming. I think most of us are not a uh, trained actor or actress. So you may feel awkward and uncomfortable uh, in front of a camera, in front of the lens. So we have prepared some tips in the following slides. So as if like you trying to make remote learners to feel as if you're talking to them, speaking to them. So the first tip is to frame your shot. You can employ the rule of thirds as I shown in this picture. It, you should be positioned in the middle or at the side. If you're planning to add text on the screen in some places, uh, like this picture in below, consider framing yourself to the side so that the text has enough space and has enough room to appear next to you. And if you're filming with your phone, you don't want to buy an extra uh, external webcam, you're filming with your phone, it's better to remember to film with landscape mode so you don't get the two black bars on the side. And the second tip is uh, always look at the camera, uh, trying to uh, uh, look at the camera while you film. Because by looking at the camera directly, you can create a connection with the learner and increase their feelings of engagement. And uh, your voice is to try to show enthusiasm and passion. Uh, the video would be more engaging to the learners. And if you have the option, you can stand instead of sitting down. It helps to inject more energy into your voice and your personality, and sometimes you may be more likely to use hand gesture when you stand, but it's okay. Uh, to have capture some hand gestures. And after filming for long days, you may, find, you may feel very tired and take a short break before you film for the second part, second video. 
So I'm gonna pass the mic to my colleague, Crystal, to talk about a few more tips uh, during your filming. Um, hi everyone, this is Crystal. So I'm going to give you some more tips about how to do the filming. So the first one is um, about the wardrobe. During your filming, you can wear whatever you like to make you feel comfortable and confident. For the colors of your clothes, please stay away from solid black or white color. And please do not wear any shade of green if you are going to use a green screen for filming. For the style or pattern, please avoid wearing shirts with prominent logos, unless they're the logo of your department or your um, university. Also, please avoid the tight patterns such as stripes or checks, as they can cause the buzzing effect on the camera. For the accessories you're wearing, please avoid wearing big or jangly um, accessories as they may cause noise and will be easily picked up by your microphone. For hairs, if you have long hairs, please make sure that your hairs are stay away from the microphone as they may create noise as well. If you encounter any echo issues during a filming, we would suggest you to bring in some soft surface items into the room, such as cushions, curtains, rugs, blankets, as they can absorb the echoes in the room. For the microphone you're using, we would suggest you to maintain a 15 to 30 centimeters distance from your mouth to have a better audio. If you do have to stop and you want to resume the recording, you can clap your hands like this in front of the microphone. So the audio file like this will show a spike and it's easier for you to edit later on because you know where you stop and you know where you resume. As for the environment for your filming, please remember to turn off all the notifications on all your devices. Do not set them to vibrate mode even because the microphone can pick up the vibration noise as well. If there is noise or if you made some mistake during the filming, you can pause and pick up from one or two sentences back. And of course, before you resume, you can clap your hands. If you are recording a voiceover only, you can consider to record in a closet as it can help to eliminate the ambient noise. Last but not least, always practice for many times before you do the filming. I know some teachers will be camera shy or you feel uncomfortable in front of the camera. So what we suggest is if you have a script, please read it out loud for several times before you're filming. And if you don't plan to use a script, make sure you have some bullet points that can help you to think through during the filming. So after the filming, we need to go to the video editing. So here are some video specs for your reference. The most important one will be um, we will suggest all the teachers to set the minimum video resolution of at least 720p because that will be easier for all your students to watch the video. And as mentioned before, Hong Kong U now has a campus um, license for Camtasia, which is a video editing software work on both um, Mac or um, Windows. So we will have more training or resources later on. We will introduce that to you in the next few slides. After you finish the video editing, we will suggest you to upload your lecture videos to HKU Panopto. If you never try so, we have a video here filmed by Tally to teach you how to upload the things to HKU Porto, uh, Panopto. So here we want to provide some additional resources for your reference if you want to know more about how to make good quality videos, how to set lightings or audios better to fit your needs, or if you want to know more about how to do video editing on um, Camtasia, Adobe Premiere Pro, or iMovie here. In the right-hand side, we'll also provide a list of URL links of um, the free or paid sites for stock photos or stock audios for you to use in your video editing. 
you can have a look at it later on. So now let me pass the mic to um, Dr. Leon Lee. So, uh, thanks, Crystal and Sharon, for the uh, illustration. So the rest will be about uh, video support in Hong Kong U. So, uh, of course, you can produce videos by yourself and in your office, at your home, etc. But you think if you think you need more technical support, or if you think you want to spend that ta less time on the technical uh, on the technical setup, you can feel free. Come back to Hong Kong. Come back to Hong Kong. You, we have uh, plenty of spaces and studios for you to do the filming. So first, uh, uh, e support. So actually, uh, as mentioned by Professor Yen Holiday, so Teddy has set up a WhatsApp hotline for e learning uh, queries. So remember, uh, so try to remember this mobile phone. So if you have installed a WhatsApp desktop. Uh, software before, so you can just click this link and you will be di directly direct to uh, the uh, number for asking content, asking uh, uh, questions. So we aim to respond all e-learning inquiries within 10 minutes during the office hours. So uh, we have several interns and colleagues to support this hotline. So uh, feel free to use it for uh, TNL uh, e-learning. And uh, please send a message. So it can be text message. Uh, sometimes if you need to do some demo, you can use the video message, etc. cetera. So, uh, but please don't, do, uh, please don't uh, call us because we will not uh, answer your call. And this uh, function, this hotline will be continued and, uh, for the whole semester. So uh, if you have any questions about you, for example, don't know how to switch on the uh, panel poll or Zoom, uh, how to uh, create some things, etc. Uh, feel free to use this hotline. And also, uh, we also receive uh, feedback from teachers mentioned there. We, uh, we don't have any proto or centralized uh, e-learning news or uh, TNL news for remote teaching. So that's why uh, we have recently established a news proto. So talking about all the administrative uh, information, logistics, support on remote teaching. So uh, you can go to this one with the most update uh, uh, process and procedures on, for TNL. And if you want to, uh, besides the WhatsApp hotline, we also have set up a appointment uh, system. So you can uh, click this link and then uh, type in your request and Tyrone and I, uh, and also some other colleagues will help to come to your office to do all, uh, all kinds of e-learning consultations and then give more uh, personalized support. So please check this tuning as well as the previous uh, WhatsApp uh, hotline. So uh, talking about the studio and facilities, uh, some of you may notice that uh, for, IT, uh, for, ITS, uh, for ITS, for library, for medical library, and for tele, we already have uh, studios and of course, uh, we believe more uh, there will be more teachers aim to produce videos. Uh, that's why we also set up a few more studios in uh, Chihuahua Learning Common and, uh, and supported by us. So uh, the left hand side is the uh, studio in Tele and the right hand side is the studio in uh, Chihuahua Learning Common with the uh, mic, camera, and also a uh, even the green screen or everything get ready. So you can just bring your PowerPoint and then come, come to our studio, do the filming and then take the video and then you can do some post editing later on uh, if need. And, and, of course, uh, and of course for medical li uh, faculty colleagues, so uh, you can also go to medical library. So there are also several e-learning uh, studios for you to do the filming. You can contact your own faculty e-learning support team for more information. Okay, so talking about software. So uh, as mentioned, so there will be a free uh, Camtasia license for staff and students. So to, pro, uh, to support you, produce up to standard video for TNL. So we will provide more trainings on August. And if you want to know more about how to produce videos, so feel free to use this slide set or go to this link uh, to have a uh, online, uh, we have produced a uh, short course on uh, video production. 
And of course, some of you may want to produce Oscar level or high quality level videos uh, for teaching and learning, for knowledge exchange, and for some other research purpose, etc. So my recommendation is uh, try to uh, apply a TDG or TEG for that purpose. And we can provide some advice for you, but we can't help for producing those videos for something beyond uh, TNL. Again, uh, if you are new to remote teaching, if you haven't experienced remote teaching before, uh, please go to these two links. So with a quick start guide on all the con uh, on all on discussions on all the con uh, all the aspects on remote teaching, and also the training uh, videos for all kinds of e-learning tools. And here shows uh, all the links. Uh, so uh, talking about how to use uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. Panopto and Zoom for video production. So with different uh, links talking about different uh, functions that you can use for uh, for video production. Okay, again, so the, almost the last page. So again, is uh, some promotion. So this is the, today's is just the first webinar. And we will, we will have several more webinars. So conducted by us, including Dr. Vincent Chen later on. So on various aspects, so video production, Nurturing full soon, uh, group work, assessment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the next uh, nurturing part, we will try to uh, showcase or actually uh, talk about the com uh, common uh, problem issues that teachers encounter during the nurturing using the Zoom. So again, the cost update, uh, news update. So remember, so uh, Professor Yan Day and RTS will send you email today and on the, the, some uh, logistic information. So please check email. And if you can't find that email, please check the butt mail, uh, butt mail uh, folder. So that's the end of the today's uh, webinar. So we have, uh, uh, we, we uh, feel free to ask, uh, so ask us questions. So through the Q&A uh, uh, button and tab.